Grab your brush and your easel. We're about to paint a trio of masterpieces in canvas from Road to Infamy Games. Hey, I'm Andy at Board Game Barrister. Our play-along tutorials are designed for you to be able to play along with your own copy of the game, or just to learn to play as you watch. If you do have your own copy, feel free to grab your game box now and follow along. Let's get started by opening the box and retrieving your game components. You should have one cloth game mat, 12 scoring cards, 60 transparent art cards, 20 background cards, 20 ribbons in each of five colors for a total of 100, 20 inspiration tokens, a deck box, and a pack of sleeves. There will be times throughout this tutorial where I suggest that you pause the video while you get caught up in your own game. Let's take our first pause here while you get your box open and your pieces all accounted for. Let's get set up for your game. First, unroll the cloth mat and place it within reach of all players. Among your scoring cards, find the cards titled Variety, Emphasis, Composition, and Repetition. Place those four cards on the four spaces at the top of your mat. This is the designer's suggested scoring setup for your first game. In future games, you can use any combination of four scoring cards that you wish, and there are even some suggested scenarios on the back cover of your rulebook. For now, the remaining scoring cards will not be used this game and can be returned to the box. Place your ribbons in piles next to the matching icons on the mat. Note that the ribbons are actually different shapes in addition to being different colors in case anyone playing has color vision deficiencies. Shuffle the art cards and place them inside the deck box. Place the deck box on the deck space with its open side facing to the left. Then draw and place the top five art cards on the five spaces to the left of the box. You may notice as you're handling your art cards that there is a protective layer of plastic film on each of the cards. This film was to protect the cards during manufacturing and is intended to be removed, so you can carry on with your game and remove the layer when you see it coming loose. If you're a fidgety person like me, it's a great way to occupy your hands while you're waiting for your next turn. Place each of your background cards in one of the clear sleeves, then each player should take three background cards of their choice. The backgrounds you choose is purely aesthetic and has no effect on the gameplay. The remaining background cards and sleeves can be returned to the box. And finally, give each player four inspiration tokens, then return the rest of those inspiration tokens to the box. Let's pause again while you get your game set up as you see it here. Unpause when you're ready to get started. Let's get painting! In your game of Canvas, you're going to be collecting art cards into your hand that you will combine and overlap in sets of three to complete beautiful paintings. In the top portion of each art card, you're going to find aesthetic graphic imagery, and in the bottom, you'll find a set of element icons. Depending on the cards you choose to include and their placement toward the front or back of the painting, some of these element icons will be overlapped and not counted. When you complete a painting, you'll compare the icons that are showing with the conditions on the scoring cards and collect ribbons for the conditions you've satisfied. Once all players have completed their third and final painting, you'll count up your ribbons and see who impressed the judges most this game. Your first player is whoever most recently painted, and then play will proceed clockwise for the rest of the game. First player, you will be able to do one of two things on each of your turns. You can either take an art card from the mat and add it to your hand, or you can complete a painting with the cards in your hand. Because no one has cards in their hands yet, everyone's going to begin the game with the take a card action. We'll talk about completing a painting later on. You can use your turn to take an art card from the mat anytime you have fewer than five cards in your hand. You may always take the card that is farthest from the deck for free, or you can skip any number of cards to take one that's closer to the deck. But the cost to skipping cards is that you must place an inspiration token from your supply on every card you skip. And if you run out of inspiration tokens, you can't continue to skip cards. If the card you take already has one or more inspiration tokens on it, you collect those tokens and add them to your supply. To complete your take a card action, slide any remaining cards and any inspiration tokens on them away from the deck to fill the empty space, then draw a new card from the deck and place it in the now empty space closest to the deck. When selecting which art card to take, keep in mind the four scoring cards for your game. In this starting scenario, you get a ribbon for variety if your painting shows all four of the unique element icons, hue, shape, texture, and tone. You score an emphasis ribbon if your painting has exactly one hue icon showing, no more, no fewer. You score composition if all five of the color swatch positions on your painting contain an icon or a silver bonus space. And you score repetition for each pair of shape icons in your painting. 
You can collect more than one ribbon for this card if your painting shows more than one pair, but each shape icon can only be counted once, so you would need to reach four or six icons to score multiple ribbons. You can also review these scoring conditions on the back of each scoring card. You may see some silver bonus icons appearing on some of the art cards. These give you opportunities to score bonus points within your paintings. We'll talk about those more before you make your second selections. First player, let's pause while you take your first card, place any required inspiration on the cards you skip, and replenish the art card row. Then everyone else should do the same in clockwise order. Unpause when everyone has taken their first card. Alright, everyone should have taken one turn using the take a card action. You'll be taking a card for at least the second and third turns as well to get to the minimum three cards it takes to complete a painting. The rest of the game will proceed continuously in clockwise order, so the same player will begin this second set of turns as well. Before you do, let's talk about those silver ribbons. When a completed painting shows a silver bonus icon in one or more of its five spaces, the painting scores silver ribbons for each matching element icon in the same painting. The silver bonus icon does not count as an element icon, so it can't satisfy its own ribbon condition. For instance, the silver bonus on this painting awards a silver ribbon per tone icon in the same painting, so this player would collect two silver ribbons in addition to all of their scoring card ribbons. Silver ribbons are worth two points each at the end of the game. Let's continue playing now. Pause here while everyone continues to use the take a card action. Unpause when everyone has three cards in their hand, the minimum needed for a painting, and we'll talk through the complete a painting action. You did it! With your three cards, you now have the option to take the Complete a Painting option on your turn instead of taking a card. Remember that you can have up to five cards in your hand before you have to complete a painting, so you could also continue to take cards on your turn for now. We found in our games that most players collected their maximum of five cards before choosing to complete a painting because it gave us the most possible options from which to complete our painting. That said, you might find that there are times when you're happy with the three or four cards you have, and would rather complete a painting now to keep even more options open for your next one. Well, let's talk about completing a painting. To do so, choose exactly three cards you would like to include in your painting. Slide them into the sleeve in front of one of your background cards, layering them in the order of your choice. Only the visible icons count for scoring, so layer carefully. When the painting is ready, read the title of your painting to each other player and show everyone the beautiful work of art you've created. Everyone else, take a moment to appreciate the detail and composition that have gone into your peers' work. Perhaps take a step back, tilt your head to one side, and hold your chin studiously. Then we'll look at each scoring card down the row and check each to see if the completed painting earns ribbons from that card. Some cards can be scored a maximum of one time per painting, like variety, composition, and emphasis while others can potentially be scored more than once, like repetition. Lastly, check for any silver bonus icons on the completed painting, and collect any silver ribbons as we talked about earlier. I'll show a full sample of collecting ribbons and scoring them at the end of the video. We also enjoy playing with a slight variation on the complete a painting action, where instead of showing your painting to the other players and collecting your ribbons, you simply read the title and place the completed painting face down in front of you. Then, at the end of the game, we take turns showing off our full three painting galleries and scoring our ribbons all at once. This makes it so you can't compare your progress with other players mid-game, and even if you've fallen way behind, your choices still feel meaningful all the way until the end. Once you've completed your third painting, your game is complete and you will no longer take turns. You now know all you need to know to play through the rest of your game. Keep in mind that when you're looking at the scorecards, the point values listed are for the number of matching earned ribbons shown. So if you earned two composition ribbons between your paintings, you would score a total of three points for composition at the end of the game. Pause again here while you play out the rest of your game. Unpause when everyone at the table has completed their third and final painting, and we'll go through a full scoring sample. Great work, everyone. You should now have three completed paintings, each containing exactly three art cards in the order you chose. Let's take a look at an example of scoring. I'll go through each of this sample player's three paintings, the ribbons they would receive, and how to score those ribbons, so you can make sure you're collecting ribbons and scoring correctly as well. Let's take a look at their first painting. I give you Precious Curiosity. Let's go all the way down the line and look at each scoring card. First is Variety. This painting does contain all four element icons, so we collect a Variety ribbon. Next, we have the exactly one hue icon required for emphasis, so we collect an emphasis ribbon. Third, we have filled all five color swatch spaces on our painting, so we collect a composition ribbon, but we have only one shape icon, so we collect no repetition ribbons. 
Lastly, this painting has two silver bonus icons, so we will collect two silver ribbons for the two tone icons showing, and one silver ribbon for the one texture icon showing, for a total of three silver ribbons. On to our next painting, Divine Beauty. This one's a bit pretentious, and it might not collect as many ribbons. Let's see. First, we have no texture icon, so we don't meet the condition for variety. We have two hue icons, so we missed the mark on emphasis as well. We do get composition for filling all five swatches once again. And the one thing this painting does have going for it, because we have two pairs of shape icons, we collect two repetition ribbons. Our third and final painting is titled Deep Nightmare. This one fulfills variety with all four icons. We have the exactly one hue icon needed for emphasis. We once again filled all five swatches for the composition ribbon, and we even got to two shape icons for a single repetition ribbon. Plus, we do have a silver bonus once again, so we get two silver ribbons for our two tone icons. This one went great. Okay, so now at the very end of the game, we're going to look at all the ribbons we've earned and see how many points they're worth. We collected two variety ribbons for a value of eight points. Our two emphasis ribbons are worth four points, plus our maximum three composition ribbons for nine more points and our three repetition ribbons grab us 11 points. Finish up with our five silver ribbons for a total of 10 points, and our final score is 42. The player with the most points at the end is your winner, and if there does happen to be a tie, the player with the most inspiration tokens remaining takes the win. That does it for our play along tutorial of Canvas. If you found this video handy, we'd be so appreciative if you hit those like and subscribe buttons, and we love chatting with our viewers, so leave a comment if you've got a comment. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.